Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here. I'm Jay Fidel. It's Friday afternoon. We're sort of easing out of the week. We had 25 plus shows this week, and now we're going to do one that is the penultimate um, on community matters. Community matters in Hawaii because community does matter. You remember that from your of days course. in public of office. I remember that. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> You look younger now. And what happened? <laughs> oh, attention! Thanks. You know, that's right. Guy on that's right. Less, there, less uh, stress. And, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. So uh, we have we have in the studio for a special show on the Hawaii Chess Festival 2015, which is coming up very soon. Uh, we have Bo Mueller. He's the president of the Hawaii Chess Federation. Say hi to the people. See, there's Hello. your camera. Just say. Hello. Hi, my name is Bo. Hi, my name is Bo. <laughs> <laughs> We have uh, Maurice Ashley. He's an international grandmaster, the first African American grandmaster in the country, or possibly the world. What? In the world, in actually. In the world. Yes, ooh, that's ooh, correct. At this table, at this table here at Think Tank. All right. And you're here for the uh, international for the Hawaii Chess Festival 2015, and you're going to put on a number of uh, events. Why don't you say hello to? Which camera am I looking at? The camera with the red. Ah, there it is. I see two cameras with the red. You guys are trying to confuse me, no, but I guess the, red, big, the red. big red. Hello. Aloha. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn, New York. No kidding. That's Brooklyn. right. Yeah. Brooklyn. 5,000 miles traveling, 11 you know, hours direct flight. Yeah. But it was fun. It was Brooklyn fun. Brooklyn used to be, uh, you know, um, sort of second to Manhattan. Now it's first to Manhattan. Thank you very much for appreciating all that. The great, all the great creativity. Everything's there's coming a, out of Brooklyn. There's some guys, you know, uh, work in Manhattan, probably in the, in the finance industry, and they went and they bought a cyclotron and put it in a loft in Brooklyn, Williamsburg. Now that's a borough. Yeah. Brook, Brook, <laughs> Brooklyn's hot. We've got, now we've got a basketball team, although they kind of suck. But at any rate, we've got a team and, and a lot of energy being invested in Brooklyn right now, so we're proud of it. We don't consider ourselves from New York. When you say, where are you from? I say, I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> Make it clear. I'm from Queens. I fully understand. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I'm Queens? I don't know. <laughs> okay, in the far end is, uh, is a guy on tie. I know him since 2000 or so. 15 years, give or take. Um, what have you been doing, Guy? Um, since, uh, since then, I've uh, been, uh, been working on my uh, uh, consulting and engineering business. Still, still do. And, uh, and, uh, and actually, this is like my 20th year being the Hawaii Chess Federation Scholastic Director. Okay, but well, what is a Scholastic Director? So we um, something to do well, with schools. Well, I kind of I defined the position myself. I don't know if we had one before, uh, but, uh, but basically I run uh, and schedule and run all the Scholastic tournaments for all the K through 12. There's about uh, six tournaments a year, and, uh, and then uh, we I work with and and take uh, and spot. We try to work with uh, certain schools that take teams to the nationals, mm -hmm. as well as our uh, as well as our state uh, state um, middle school, state high school, and state girls champion who goes to represent us during uh, at um, at the nationals. Yes, but why do you do this? I do this because I want to uh, rather than sit back and talk about STEM and talk about uh, developing engineers. Uh, I like the, the personal interaction with the, with the children to, uh, to uh, get them to compete something and also to, uh, to improve the intellectual quality of uh, Oahu and Honolulu. Uh, quite frankly, you know, everything, there's lots of sports, you can do a lot, a lot of sports and find lots of sports and watch a lot of sports, but, uh, but chess I think offers an opportunity for, uh, for competition uh, intellectually and so I think it helps to develop, uh, develop uh, brains and uh, we hope, we hope uh, we're bringing in guys like uh, like Ashley, like uh, Maurice, uh, to uh, to help us uh, develop our own grandmasters too. Eventually. Yeah, okay, I want to talk about that for a minute. But first, I, I just had a recollection, just popped up in my brain. Did you guys know that he went to Annapolis? West Point. West Point. Oh. That's the other the other place. I never I never the visited there. <laughs> the other brand. <laughs> did you know that? I did. He's a oh, okay. former former state senator as well. You know, Yes, well, of course. Our Everybody state. knows that. But uh, do you know that, Marie? I didn't know. West Point, right here. Right. I'm right. impressed. <laughs> this is just north of Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's anyway, right. I consider New York my second home. I've spent many years in New York. Yeah. yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right-thinking people. <laughs> that is correct. Sir. That is correct. So I, I want to catch on one thing you said before we get to the big news. And the big news, of course, is the is the festival. But uh, what is it about chess that's intellectual? 
What is it about chess that, chess that makes my mind whirl? Um, you know, we know that chess is, is graphical. It's a spatial, you see, if you, if, you, if you go to sleep at night, put your head on the pillow, you, you see the chess board. <laughs> Don't you? I know you do. I do. <laughs> sure, yeah. And so, but it's spatial relations, it's geographical. Uh, certainly it comes out of battle scenarios uh, o over the millennia. Um, but what is, it, what is it about chess that's intellectual? What does it make? What, what makes it intellectual? I, I think uh, just offhand, if, if you watch, uh, there's, there's games, the, the exciting games are the quick chess board, the blitz chess games where there's pieces flying, slapping the clock. Uh, uh, but, but in fact, when you watch an actual, uh, what they call a regular tournament, if you watch what's going on, there's really nothing going on, uh, no action. There's people thinking. And so if you, if you look at chess, competitive chess at least, at, at that level, it's mostly thinking. As you're thinking, trying to outthink your opponent, figure out what he's doing, then figure out what your plan is. So it's mostly thinking, and that's what I think makes it intellectual. Well, for me, the, the challenge of chess is always is what, what uh, Guy mentioned, yes, but critically, to get inside the mind of another person. Because most of the time, we think we're really smart, right? We think we're really intelligent. We got our points. We're going to debate our points. We're going to show how we're right. It's not often that somebody else is saying, you're right. Your idea is actually stupid, and I'm going to crush it. I'm going to show you how <laughs> dumb your move was. And you have to defend this point. You can't just throw out any kind of garbage because they're going to crush you if you do. So you have to, A, come up with interesting ideas that will be effective uh, against uh, you know, on the board, but then B, prove it against a determined opponent who's trying to show that your ideas don't make any sense. And, and if they do, they're going to counter it with an, another brilliant idea that you'll have to come back with. Normally when we take exams, right, you can study for the exam, here's the solution, boom, boom, boom. You don't take an exam where you think you have the solution and the, the exam changes its mind and throws you a different question, a curveball, <laughs> every single time you move. That's chess. You have to think on the fly, you have to come up with original ideas, and you have to counter an opponent who's at least as smart as you are. You, you know, you hope they aren't, but, but they're pretty smart themselves, and that's a serious challenge. And I think that that's why chess trains our kids so well for, for school and for life. Let me follow up on one thing you said, something about getting in the other fellow's brain. Um, is, that, is that psychology too? In other words, uh, suppose I, you know, use body language or like uh, Melvin Belli used to do, he had a wire in his cigar and, and the ash would never fall off the end of his <laughs> cigar and he wanted the jury to watch the cigar, how the ash would never fall off. Uh, you know, psych him out. Is that, are you talking about psych him out? Like tennis, where you got to psych the other guy out? Well, chess, chess is hugely psychological to the highest level. Absolutely. There's no question about that. Body language plays a big role. Players try to have a poker face, even though it's chess, not poker. You don't want to show your opponent that you're perturbed by their last move or potentially <laughs> that, you're, that you're flabbergasted by the last move. You, you try to you know, stay as even keel as you can. But some players can't control themselves. People like Gary Kasparov, for example, who was world champion for 15 years. This guy, you could actually tell. Uh, exactly how he was feeling at every moment. He wore his emotions on his sleeve. Uh, if, if he had a bad position, you could see it. If he had a good position, there were a couple of things, a couple of tells that he had. For example, whenever he was comfortable, he had his jacket on his, his, and his uh, watch on. No, no issue. When he started thinking, there's a little bit of a challenge here, he would take the watch off. That means, you know, I got I to gotta work hard here. Is then, this a signal or is it no, unconscious? No, it's, it, it was unconscious. Okay, okay. You know, he, he just did it. He, just like his body was starting to heat up and he needed to get rid of the watch. When he was in trouble, the jacket would come off. And we commentators would get excited, like, oh, my God, the jacket's off. That means he's in trouble. Once he solved the problem and he's no longer in any trouble, the jacket came back on. When the watch came on, you were dead. It was a bad sign. So, so the, we wear our emotions as we play, and, our, and it's even in the games themselves. You can tell how a person is by how they handle a chess game. If you're cautious, you'll play cautious moves. If you're aggressive risk taker like me, coming straight out of Brooklyn, I'm going to go wild on you. So, and, and you can tell. And we try to devise plans against how another person thinks. So when you're playing against somebody, you research him, you watch him. Maybe you watch videos. You watch his moves. Absolutely, absolutely. You want to know who, you, who you're dealing with. Yeah. We've got databases. People, you, if you want to look right? up, you want to look up <laughs> my games from the past. Just Google Maurice Ashley, chessgames.com or chessbase. <laughs> All my games show up. You can look and, you know, if you find anything about me, please, you know, let me know so that I can use it. <laughs> okay. or, or, try to, or try to diffuse it if somebody uses it against me. So suppose I do that. I Google you and I find your games from the past. 
Maurice, how would you characterize yourself? I hope you're not going to give away any secrets here. How would you characterize yourself as, as, a, as, a, as an opponent, a formidable opponent? What are your characteristics? Well, I'm, I'm semi-retired now. I'm an organizer. I organize big events like, you know, our guy, I bow here. So I'm less worried about people analyzing my tendencies and giving away any secrets. But I characterize myself as an aggressive player. I don't mind losing material. That is, if you, have to, you want one of my pawns... This is material. Material is the stuff of the board, yeah. You heard it here on ThinkTech. It's material. <laughs> it's material. So, so me, you want, you want a pawn of mine, you know, you can have it. You, know, you, you want a piece... As long as you give me a chance to aim at your king, I'm good to go. Yeah. Now, other players can tend to be more cautious. They don't give away anything. They just want to squeeze you, slowly suck the life of your position, <laughs> squeeze you until you die. But I'm the kind of guy that's like, you want something, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to let you have it. Watch you think out. you got it. Come on in, and I'm going to bash you over the head, and, you know, and then you're going to regret that you ever touched me. I don't stuff. know why anybody would call you an aggressive player. <laughs> yeah, really, really. Come on. Nice guy. Come on. <laughs> okay, one more thing is uh, you talk about originality. We'll get to you in a minute, Bob. <laughs> don't worry about it. Talk about originality, okay? You seem to suggest that there are, there are games that have never been played. Is this true? After the first, the first four moves in chess, there are three billion possibilities. Three billion, actually, let me say that differently. There are three billion ways to play the first four moves. Three billion. We have not even scratched the surface of exhausting those first four moves, uh, or the first ten moves, first twelve moves. There's, there's an infinite possibility, near infinite possibility in chess. There are more uh, possibilities in chess, they say, than atoms in the observable universe. <laughs> Now, I've never actually counted those atoms, but I can tell you that's a big number. And, uh, you need to and talk so, to an engineer. And so, yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's originality all the time. Every time you play a chess game, it's going to be something new. Okay, one last question. And that is, um, you talk about, you know, knowing your uh, opponent and thinking into his mind. How many, how many, legitimately, how many moves ahead can you play? How, with five? Three, eight, ten, fifteen? How many? You know, you're insulting me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it's like one. So, oh, okay. well, let, let's say this: uh, we're going to have a lot of fun things happening at the Hawaii Chess Festival. One of them is a blindfold exhibition that uh, one of the grandmasters, Timur Gureyev, is going to play. He's going to play seven people at the same time. That means he's going to not see the board. The moves are going to be called out. He's going to hear the moves, remember the moves of seven different opponents, and call out his moves in response. He's going to track the whole game, so move one to however long it takes. It could be 30 moves, 40 moves, 50 moves, and he's going to have a picture of all seven games cleanly in his head. And he's going to win all seven, by the way. I'll just add that little twist. Well, maybe somebody might have said it. I don't know. I, I, I hear that, uh, uh, that somebody is going to play. Maybe Bo's going to play, or maybe Emily, or your, who works here. Will play. Last, yeah. last Somebody's going to beat him. Emily, you're no way allowed. She might go down there and beat him. She yeah. might go okay. down there. We're betting on I, her. I she was yeah. a player. Last Back in the day, they called her the girl. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> no, she's okay. He knows but, everything. But the thing, the, thing about, the thing about that is we have the image of the chessboard so firmly planted in our brains because, you know, we, we eat, drank, slept this game. So you really don't think ahead deeply in chess but so far because the opponent's going to come up with a different move. So you try to manage the problems as much as you can. You see just enough. And if you need to look five, you look five. If you need to look ten, you look ten. Most of the time, we're only looking about two or three. And, and that's all you can manage because the opponent's going to surprise you anyway. Okay, one last question. That's what you said, like three questions. Uh, <laughs> everything you say makes me think of more questions. You're a perfect guest here. <laughs> um, you said they could be brilliant moves, okay? So that means that chess players have to be smart. I always knew that. I knew that about Emily the moment I saw her. Um, but, but smart like what? There's different kinds of smart. In other words, uh, would I, for example, find that a, a player who is brilliant in chess would be brilliant in poetry? Would he be, or she, be brilliant in engineering? What, what, what kind of brilliance is it that we're talking about? Uh, chess players are varied. You've seen a lot of skill sets uh, over the years. There are some chess players who are brilliant mathematicians, like uh, Emmanuel Lasker was, or some players who are brilliant uh, singers, like Vas Vasily Smyslov. We've had great piano players. Some people like David Bronstein spoke 15 languages. I think that, though, to me, chess players are, are smart at solving problems. That, that I think, is, is probably the, the, the biggest...
fist with characterizing. Solving problems, you give them a nut to crack, they crack that nut. But it's never necessarily in the same areas. So uh, the creativity is manifested it's in this logic. Ways. Logic is part of it, but there's a lot of intuition. There's, you, don't, you don't always solve problems with logic. Logic, you know, a problem that's solved usually is logical only in hindsight. It's just being able to penetrate into the nature of things and then figuring it out. So it's not, you know, we, we, we just, right. we have different skill sets. We have to move on now. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Maurice. Um, we'll come back. Okay, now, Bo. Mm. What about what Guy and Marie said do you agree with, and what parts do you not agree with? <laughs> and how many games can you play at the same time? <laughs> I agree with everything both of them said. <laughs> that's, that's the long and short of it. Uh, in terms of how many games I can play at the same time, I recently went to Punahou. So Punahou has an amazing chess program. They have an after-school chess program. We have one of our national masters there who has really seated an excellent program. I think 90 kids uh, every week go through the program. And I went there and very arrogantly challenged the whole class to a simultaneous exhibition. Oh, no kidding. And I... How recently was this? This was maybe three weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. And they crushed me. They beat up on me so <laughs> badly. It hurt my ego so much. It was... Uh, I think I played 30 of them and lost 10 of the games. Oh, wow. So I, it was partly because I gave myself a significant time handicap. I should have given myself more time. I gave myself 45 minutes to make, you know, 30, 30 players times an average of 40 moves per game. So what is that, 1,200 moves in 45 <laughs> minutes? It's an impossible feat. So, and you say chess players are smart. <laughs> there it is. Some of us are. Uh, I'm not claiming to be smart at all. But. Well, I want more. I want more on that. Uh, we'll take a break for now and come back, and then we got so much more to talk about. We'll never finish everything we're going to say. Okay, so uh, it's it's Bo Mueller, uh, president of Hawaii uh, Chess Foundation, Chess Federation, and chief organizer of the festival that is the Hawaii Chess Festival. Uh, Maurice Ashley, he's an international, international grandmaster. International. That's, you know, that's more than a national mm -hmm. grand grandmaster. Mm -hmm. And Guy Antai, he's the scholastic director K through 12 in this tournament, in the tournaments you organize, but also you're involved in the, in the festival right now. Yes. Okay, we'll take a short break and we're gonna think about our next move. <laughs> we'll be right back. Inspired by an ancient culture, classical Chinese dance, vigorous physicality, timeless stories, 5,000 years of Chinese music and dance. Shen Yun presents authentic Chinese culture. Coming to Blaisdell Concert Hall, May 8th and 9th. Tickets at ShenYun.com or call 808-792-3919. Hi, my name is Andrew Howard. I'm an astronomer at the Institute for Astronomy at the University of Hawaii up in Manoa. I'd like to tell you about the annual open house that we're having this year. It is on April 6th. 11 to uh, 4 p.m. It's an all-ages event, kids, grown-ups, even uh, people in between, everyone is welcome. We have a lot of uh, really fun activities. You get to meet astronomers, look at yourself in an infrared camera, play with Legos, make robots, look at videos. Um, you can even make it, some of the kids like to make comets out of uh, gravel and, and, uh, and snow. Even adults like to do that, too. You'll be able to look at the sun with a solar camera uh, safely. It's really a great activity. We do this every year um, in April, and I hope uh, to see you this year. Thanks. His mind was on. It's okay, so we're playing games here on Think Tech. We're doing chess today, the Hawaii Chess Festival um, uh, for 2015 with uh, Bo Muller, Mueller, uh, Maurice Ashley, and Guy Antai. So let's talk about the festival. Now, you're organizing it, Bo. Tell us what it is, where it is. You know those journalistic what, where, when, how, why, all that. Sure. Well, the Hawaii Chess Festival is an inaugural festival event. We go from March 14th through March 22nd, so it's nine. coming up this weekend. Yep, starts tomorrow. Okay. Kicks off with our annual State Scholastic Chess Championship. So our State Scholastic Chess Championship generally draws about 120 kids, 120, 140 kids from all over the islands. Mm -hmm. We have a team traveling in from Molokai, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's that's the kickoff event. We have. Players like Maurice coming. Maurice is going to kind of kickstart the event, get the kids' blood flowing, maybe, maybe give some. Them. Teach them. I'm going to beat them. 
beat up on them a little bit. You know? No, uh, beat is too teach. Yeah, I'll 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 help them after their games. You know, a lot of games they'll play, and we'll go after go over the games afterwards. I'll also talk about the grandmasters are going to be here. We have some great players who are coming uh, from far and wide. Uh, one player, true star in the game, is Hao Yifan, who's the women's world champion from China. Just brilliant oh, lady yeah, who's yeah. going to be here, all of 21 years old. And just, oh, you fine, yeah. Uh, yeah hyper genius. Yeah. We have Tamor Gurev, as I mentioned before, who's going to take on seven players at the same time, uh, blindfolded. Uh, we have Alejandro Mar Ramirez from the United States as well, and Sam Shanklin is one of the top 100 players in the world. Wow. So some We're real stars. Or, yeah, real stars are going to be at the event. Yeah, so uh, what about uh, Alan Arakawa? Is he a star? <laughs> Who? No. Uh, Thank Mayor, you. Mayor Arakawa is, is showing up for our charity banquet. So uh -huh. we have a banquet at the Hilton Waikiki Beach on uh, Wednesday the 18th, I uh -huh. believe. And he's going to be playing a team game. So it's a non-consultation game. So say Maurice and I are on a team. And it's like him tying his hand behind his back and closing one of his eyes. That's kind of what, it's, what it would be like. So Mayor Arakawa and I are about the same strength. He's actually a very oh, you know, decent amateur chess player. So he's going to be teaming up with the women's world champion. And we're going to have Sam Shanklin, Grandmaster Sam Shanklin from California, who, like he said, is one of the top 100 players in the entire world, rising star. Uh, he's going to team up with someone who wins their seat in the silent auction. Is this, is this on two games or one game? One game. One game, one game four people? On one one game, game, four people. So he'll make, Maurice will make his Grandmaster move. And then I will make my terrible amateur, or <laughs> so the Grandmaster on their side will make his grandmaster moves. So it's two players, basically it's two players playing on each side, one board, we can't talk to each other. So if I come up with a brilliant idea and you know I sacrifice something and I'm expecting a great follow-up and, and I'm looking at Bo like, you better see the move, dude. And I can't tell him, I can't nudge him under the table, yeah. can't say anything, and then he screws it up. <laughs> that's what he's saying. And that's, that's pretty exciting. So that should be, yeah, that's pretty interesting to see the mayor, how he handles that. So you alternate moves. You alternate moves. Wow, so you got to read minds. you got to read your... They're trust me, the guy there, the there is no office. mind reading that takes place. <laughs> <laughs> you just pray. Yeah. Well, I guess some people are better at team play than others, huh? So they have to work hard to actually win the game. Because anybody could screw it up, as you say. Mm -hmm. One bad move could screw up a game, right? Isn't that true? Right. Exactly. I actually watched... A, I, I did commentary on one of those events. I've done a couple of them, in fact. They're really a lot of fun because of that imbalance of the amateur and the professional. And I watched world champion Magnus Carlsen, the number one player in the world, so from Norway, he's 24 years old. He was playing with uh, Doug Hirsch, who is a hedge fund manager, but never played a tournament in his life. And on the other side was Gary Kasparov, the former world champion, playing with a master level player. And you would think that it would have been a total wipeout because it's, it was so uneven. You know, it's like a world champion, a former world champion and a master versus a world champion and some guy. <laughs> and it turned out that the, the lesser team won because the master couldn't guess Gary Kasparov's moves. And so he just kept screwing things up and Gary kept getting angry and angry. <laughs> Like, what is your problem? Angry Soon they started, he started cursing him in, in Russian. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. Meantime, Magnus is just like, he's playing like low-key moves to make it easy for the amateur to coincide with his thoughts, and they ended up winning the game. So don't make it. Well, you gotta play, you got to play a strategy, and, and one guy could know the strategy, and the other guy could lose the strategy. Mm -hmm. So, Guy, what about the technology here? Are you following the technology in chess? I mean, for example, I look at that clock. That's not no clock I've ever seen. Uh, I haven't been around much. Um, you know, like, if you go down to Waikiki Beach, right off Kuhio Beach, these guys play chess and they have the old-fashioned like that, right? This is different. Well, the, actually, uh, uh, Jay, the, the clocks are, are old. The only thing that's maybe a little modernized is that they've become digital instead of analog. Um, but the, I think uh, technology-wise, I think what's kind of helping us uh, uh, enjoy the game across the world is, is the internet and the ability to uh, to transmit it? Uh, I've uh, and, and YouTube. I can watch. I can watch. Le uh, there's you. You can't. Uh, uh, you don't have enough time in the day to look at all the instructional video videos provided by by many grandmasters and international masters on on YouTube. Uh, so so technology wise, it's not only the the clock. The clock has been digitized, but but basically there. We one of the things we're going to use at the at the at the. Uh, event to, to, uh, to show the games on the internet is a, is a sensor board. And so while the pieces move, yeah. it'll keep up with the moves and, sh and project it onto, onto the internet. And so uh, this kind of, this kind of um, technology allows us 
and people all over the world to follow our event. Well, that's fabulous. Mm. And also to memorize your, your game. Yes, you, absolutely. You, you can memorize absolutely. the game and then replay the game off, off a computer like, like chess mm -hmm. on a computer. Exactly. So, yeah, so Maurice was talking a little earlier about chess databases. So chess databases have been around for 20 25 years. And what happens is that every, every international caliber, caliber tournament, all of the games are submitted to a database. So this database is searchable. So say I move here, my opponent moves here, I move here, my opponent moves here. The database then searches down to only games of this position. So I can study just this position. I can look at all of the professional See what you games. Can do from this point forward. Exactly. All of the professional games that were played recently in this, what's called a line. I, I've been there many, many times. I just <laughs> never knew what to do after that. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because, because it used to be that what you just said, you could walk into this line or, or other similar variations against kids, and, you know, a few moves later, they don't know what the heck's going on, and you roll it up, no problem. Now, with the databases, with the YouTube videos, with all instruction, Skype instructions from, from grandmasters all over the world, you play a kid now, it's like trying to pet a baby shark. Because they're, they got it all memorized, and they're like, you walk into this line, and they can tell you which grandmaster played it in what year and what happened in the game. And, and you have to come up with original stuff. Otherwise, you just get destroyed. It's terrible. Know, I, the technology I, has completely transformed the game. It somehow reminds me of uh, you know, the, the gaming tables in Las Vegas when there are 27 cameras watching, and everybody has little earbuds. And I uh, like, maybe you could cheat. Maybe you could cheat. If I could go for a dollar half and buy, you know, for my, for my cell phone, a chess game that will play against me. Why can't I <clears throat> follow instructions from a chess program and beat you using, using the computer? You, you and could. And you wouldn't even know you, I was you know, doing it. You, I'd you, have a little thing in my ear you, tell you, me what you, to you do. You could try. You, yeah, you could yeah. try. But it wouldn't be a sure thing. Um, it's not that it wouldn't be a sure thing. You'd pro you would beat me if you had or that kind of advanced technology. But I run a chess tournament in the U.S. called the Millionaire Chess Open. That guy was kind enough to donate one of the spots at the Hawaii Chess Festival to one of our winners there. And uh, we give away a million dollars at that tournament. So it was very important that we have... So we should go together. Yeah. He went. He was there. He was there. <laughs> Trust me. He, he, tried, he tried to win some money. Um, Try. But, <laughs> Try to sleep the key word there. there. Trust me. They don't, they don't just give you the games there. Uh, but what happened is we had security. We had, we had um, walkthroughs, like you see at the airport. We had security, you know, scanning, kind of electronics scanning with the wand, any electronics you had, you forget oh, about boy. it. That, that metal plate in your head, we caught that too. <laughs> and, and, and at the games, you got the guys walking around and checking on everyone. So, yes, we are at that time, you know, Google Glass, you know, anything sure, could work. exactly. So we, have to, we really have to survey that because nowadays uh, the technology in a cell phone could beat a grandmaster like myself. I, but really, I mean, I thought, I thought it's somewhere along the line we have you know, great champions. I, I want to say Bobby Fischer, but maybe, maybe I'm dating myself when I... You remember who that is, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't remember it, but I know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I remember that name? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you have a great master, and he beats, the ch he beats the computer. Doesn't that happen? I mean, doesn't a great chess master beat a computer? No. The, la anymore. the last time that happened was in 1996, when Kasparov defeated IBM's Deep Blue. Uh, I was a commentator for that match. And then the next year, 1997, in what was the World Trade Center, uh, um, no, sorry, that's a different match. In 1997, in New York, he played the rematch against the computer. He won the first game, then lost the second, they drew three straight games, and then he got crushed in the final game. And that was the end. The singularity had arrived, the chess singularity anyway, where... The uh, end of an era. The end of the era, 1997, <laughs> when we knew for sure that a human could beat a computer. By 2003, 2004, it was bad, like looking really bad. And then by like 2007, they were embarrassing grandmasters. And nobody wants to play against a computer now because it just, it sees too many moves, sees far ahead. And if you make one mistake, most critical thing is if you make one mistake, which you will do, you'll die. And it, it won't be like, oh, I'm playing against Bo, he's ahead, but he might mess up. Mm. It's like, I'm playing against a Terminator, and he's ahead, <laughs> and you're dead. And it's over. And that's how it is now. It's very it's interesting how that works, yeah. I guess it's the sophistication of computers in general, thanks to the engineers. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Bo uh, Mueller, uh, the president of the Hawaii Chess Federation and chief organizer of the Hawaii Chess Festival 2015. Maurice Ashley, an international grandmaster. 
uh, and he's doing a number of events, hosting a number of events at the festival, which starts tomorrow, today? Officially starts tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and Guy Antai, former state representative, I remember that, um, and a graduate of West Point. This is relevant because it's close to Brooklyn. Uh, and scholastic director of, uh, of the Hawaii Chess Federation, right? Okay. We'll be right back after this break. Aloha. I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, and what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week, we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Hi, aloha. My name is Chris Leatham, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon. And on my show, I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. Thank you. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here with uh, Bo Mueller, Maurice Ashley, and Guy Antai talking about chess, which is a great game, very important for kids. That's why Guy cares so much in the scholastic department. You all do. I know you do. It's all for kids. Anyway, so the uh, festival starting this weekend. Starting this weekend. Uh, what, how does it play out? I mean, uh, how do I win it? I want to know how to win it, and I want to know how much <laughs> money I'm going to make. Sure, sure. So I'll just run you through the, through, the, through the week. So tomorrow we have the State Scholastic Chess Championship, March 14th. After that, March 15th and March 16th, we have a Grand Master Chess Camp. So this is with this guy, Timur Gureyev, mm -hmm. from Uzbekistan, who's uh, going to have a couple kids and adults as well out at the hotel. It's going to be like an ex intensive two-day seminar. And then on Tuesday, we have this Magic Island Chess Day. So this is going to be really cool. So it's, this is uh, outside? Outside. We're going to have some tents right out on the tip of Magic Island, looking out at Diamond Head with some chess. Beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. We can't combine anything better, right? Um, so we have that. We're going to, at, and at that event, it's going to be pretty spectacular. We're having these simultaneous exhibitions where we have uh, three grandmasters over the course of the day and one women's international master taking on all comers. So we have each player taking on up to 20 players at the same time as well as a tournament that day, a quick chess tournament. Uh, following that, on Wednesday, we have a charity banquet. So we're, we're fundraising Where money for Scholastic Chess in Hawaii. It's going to be at the Hilton Waikiki Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Mayor Arakawa coming to that, uh, doing that team game we were talking about, as well as all the who's who in chess, such as Maurice and you know, local who's who, if there is such a thing. <laughs> uh, and after that, on Thursday, the International Open starts. So the International Open is kind of the mainstay, the main event of our festival. And what we're doing there is it's a four-day tournament. Uh, we have about 100 players signed up right now from, I think, 10 or 11 countries. We have seven international grandmasters, four international masters, uh, a couple women's international masters. Uh, it's going to be six games over four days. So each game can be up to four hours. Is this so, the way chess festivals usually work, this, this kind of uh, uh, yeah, it's, pace it's, and so it's, forth? It's usually a mix of different events. Ours is, is not traditional in the sense that the tournament is only four days. Usually these festivals, uh, international festivals at least, run over nine days. So you play one game per day for nine days. So is this, is this the first time or have you been doing this for a while? This is the uh, first time that we've done it. Maybe 20 years ago there was uh, another organizer who ran a couple of similar events in the late 90s. It sounds like a fabulous event. I mean, uh, you get people coming from all over the place. 
celebrating Hawaii, celebrating chess in Hawaii. That's really yeah. something. Yeah. So uh, you threw it together last week. Is that the idea? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> threw it out there and hope for something. You know? <laughs> this, this is a lot of work to put something like this together. So uh, uh, I forgot to press on, on the point of how much do I win? Sure. If I so win? The, the, the prize fund is uh, $25,000. Really? So first place is five thousand um, dollars. It's it's kind of a pittance compared to Maurice's tournament, but it's <laughs> it's enough to incentivize players to want to play. You know, and it's it's a decent it's a decent decent way to spend a weekend if you. So do you do you, are you going to have the entire uh, local chess community there? I guess they will. Show uh, we hope so. We hope so. A lot a lot of the old kind of. Um, recluse types have come out of the woodwork yeah. and have signed up for the tournament. So that's that's exciting for us that have been around local chess for a while. Um, but yeah, definitely, it's it's created, it's infused a lot of energy into the local scene. That's for sure. If I, if I want to see it or see the detail of it or see the winners of it, hmm. is there a website? Is there a place I can look? Are you we how do. are you broadcasting this? We do. We have a couple of websites. We have a website for the festival, which is HawaiiChessFestival.com, and we also have a Federation website, which is hawaiichess.org, and that's our 501c3 nonprofit. Okay. And um, most of the events that we're running, the charity banquet in particular, are being run with uh, the aim of supporting scholastic chess in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So, if I want to come, do I have to pay? Uh, if you want to play in the tournaments, you have to pay. But if you just want to watch, you don't have to pay. No, spectators. Don't tell him that. Tell him <laughs> that. <laughs> you, you can give Maurice some money, just please, please do. They do come. You, you know, you, yes, you do. With yeah. my checkbook. Yeah. That's right. Give me the checkbook when you come. You're gonna I see. Th some I thought we were getting paid for this. <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna see all those cute kids. And they're gonna be looking at you and you know, how googly eyes. Yeah, you gotta help the kids. And you know, Bo's not speaking enough about the tremendous work that he's done and Guy that they put on an amazing event. And because of what the work, what they're doing here. They've been covered by all the international websites. I know chessbase.com, that's like one of the top sites, has already covered it and, and talked about it. So it's really putting a great face on Hawaii chess. And, and I think this might be small compared to the grandiose plans they'll have for the future, but you got to start somewhere. And this is already a great event. So we're yeah, looking well, forward to seeing it. Maybe it can be it repeated, you know, on an annual Absolutely, basis. absolutely. We hope you got some sponsors out there. That's a very chess important to make part it happen. of it, isn't it? And, and the sponsors would be sponsors who sponsor kid activities, kid development, kid growth. Mm -hmm. Um, so what are you going to do, Marie? So you're going to, I, I remember from before you were going to do some hosting, some events. What are you, what are you going to do for the festival? Well, primarily I'm, I'm sort of, you know, I, I don't really like to talk that much, as you can tell. No, I, <laughs> but, I could have been surprised. Yeah, but, but I'll be hosting a few of the events. Uh, the, the, when the kids are playing, I'll, I'll be going over their games with them to help them play better moves, to show them where they went wrong. Uh, maybe uh, the award ceremony, giving out some of the prizes and introducing the Grand Masters and such. Um, the, on, on the day at Magic Island, I'll also be doing hosting activities there and then for the banquet as well. I'll be essentially trash talking the mayor about how bad his moves are. <laughs> uh, so, Good. Br Brooklyn will be in the house <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right, Guy, how about you? What's the scholastic department going to do for the festival? Well, um, we're, we're, uh, we've actually uh, started it uh, a little bit last week. With a, We had a small, uh, 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 the girls' championship uh, was conducted last week, as well as uh, we ran a, a, a state uh, bug house uh, championship, with, which is another uh, variant of chess uh, using two players against two players. And uh, so that kind of was kind of our soft opening, so, so to speak. But tomorrow is, uh, is the first formal event with the State Scholastic Championship. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, besides that, uh, uh, as a scholastic director, that, that one event uh, I plan to run, uh, we try to recruit some, uh, some kids for the camp. And then, uh, of course, I'll be supporting, uh, supporting Bo to uh, run the rest of the tournament. Yeah, that's great. I'm sure this will give Chess a, a real shot in the arm going forward. So uh, I wanted to reserve a little time for the four-move checkmate. Can you guys show me how that works? <laughs> four-move checkmate. This is what anybody Go will... slow because not everybody is going to be, you know, up to speed on this now. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is like the secret technique that you'll use. It's actually not so secret. <laughs> but if your friends don't play chess, this is what you're going to use against them. Okay. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool thing to know. 
and everybody learns at the beginning because everybody falls for at the beginning. Don't so say everybody. There are exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> well, for sure you would fall for it. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm not really. But, uh, so anyway, <laughs> the way it works is like this. There's four moves. These are four moves that will win the game if you know exactly how to follow them and if your opponent is kind enough to fall into it. And it works like this. You push the pawn that's in front of the king, two okay. squares. Yeah. And uh, your opponent does something. I'll, I'll make your opponent do the same thing. Push the okay, all right. And then these are the two key pieces, the bishop and the queen, everybody. The bishop and the queen. Yeah. So your bishop will move out three squares. I don't know, one, two, three, right? Right yeah. there. Yeah. And you'll, you'll be pointing at this pawn right here. Yeah. And I'm going to make your opponent do a, what looks Wait, like a Wait, before you do that move. now. So at this point, if I'm playing black, I'm already getting nervous. Because I see you're on a track for a four-move checkmate. <laughs> Well, I'm, I should be watching you carefully. You should be you should be watching very carefully. <laughs> if you know what to do, you won't be nervous. But, okay. <laughs> but but you know, if you're a duffer, then uh, you're in trouble already. All right. <laughs> so so the knight. So let's just make this knight move. And now this queen comes out two squares, and it's very clear. You know, you got the two pieces out, the bishop and the queen, and they're aiming at this sensitive point right here because it's next to this king. That's the key. If the king is the only thing protecting that pawn. Now, if you don't pay attention to that, and you say you make some random bishop move, bringing your piece out. Then White will smile and call friend, call the friends over, <laughs> call their family members. And, watch this, boys. And, and take the phone out and film it. You know, like, watch this. <laughs> so it's going to go on YouTube later. That's and they'll the play, end of it. And they'll play queen takes pawn, and that's checkmate. It took only four moves. The queen is protected by the bishop, so the king cannot take the queen. That's the four move checkmate. You can, it's called the scholar's mate officially. You can Google it, the scholar's mate or the four move checkmate uh, online, and you'll see this play replayed over and over. Also, some defenses, how you can easily handle it. But if your friends don't know what to do, you'll look like a genius chess player using yeah. this technique. So. And very efficient. You only took one piece off the board. Only took, you just took a pawn. That's, That's it. Just, and just, just say it. Four moves. Like very efficient. This has been used countless number of times, by the way, and uh, probably lost some friendships uh, along <laughs> the way. Yeah, I know. I have this uh, uh, very uh, distinct recollection of having been at the wrong end of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you look up and say, well, all gone, all finished. This never happened to you, Bo. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, I don't know. <laughs> there are other versions of it, and it's also possible to lose a chess game in two moves. But you'd have to basically commit suicide, like you just you know, cut your own throat. But uh, there are a lot of tricks in chess. The way to overcome this is just get a basic chess book, and, uh, or go online and watch some great videos, and you'll never fall for stuff like this and become a better player. I wanted to ask you one more question, which I've been asking myself for a long time, and that is, is the, the, the question of con concession. Concession. You know, I don't, does anybody concede anymore in chess? You mean resign? Resign. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Okay, so the, what is the test? What is your thought process when you're, you know, when you resign? What are you, what are you thinking? How much threat is there? What kind of, mm, you know, circumstances do there have to be before you would actually throw it in? Uh, well, you're, you're getting killed. I mean, it's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's really simple. <laughs> there's no, there's no long, no long thought process. Basically, um, you're, you're down 50 points in a basketball game, or you're down eight touchdowns uh, in a football game. Uh, a guy's got a gun to your head. Uh, you know, you, you, see, you see 16 of his guys and one of yours. <laughs> you think, you know, maybe this is a good time to throw in the towel. You know, I mean, it, it happens. Just think, just think of a nice boxing match. One guy's got his hand pounding on your eyeball. You know, what are you going to do? You can't block anymore. You're just getting beaten up. They say, stop, stop the game. That's when people resign. We, we fight to the bitter end, you know, if there's I a chance. I was going to ask you that. I mean, sometimes, you know, there are people who would fight to the bitter end, even if it meant they were getting pummeled. Mm -hmm. uh, so are there people like that who insist on going down to the bitter end? Ab absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and some of those people are in the hospital. And <laughs> chess, <laughs> and chess and hospital. And, uh, you heard it here. End up crazy. <laughs> No, I mean, it's, it's actually professional respect to stop a game when it's clear that they're losing. That's, that's all it is. You don't, you don't keep playing when it's just absolutely clear you're going to get crushed. But uh, some people will insist in playing. and if you do, you're going to lose anyway. So yeah. that's what it is. Okay, Guy, I mean, I'm going to let you close now. What, what do you want to tell the people? Look at uh, camera three. I think uh, even though we, uh, we as a federation target children, uh, the game is for everyone. Uh, we... We have many, uh, many uh, elderly play. Uh, one of the, the well-known uh, chess spots on, uh, in the world 
are the Waikiki chess tables because we have lots of sometimes grandmasters and masters show up just kind of on vacation and they pick up a game there and uh, we got some pretty local uh, strong local players that show up there often and so uh, what we want to do is just invite uh, not only if you have children or grandchildren bring yourself uh, down now and 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 don't uh, allow your children to embarrass you over the chessboard. Okay, Bo Mueller, how much of that do you agree with? All of it. I would just add, come to the Hawaii Chess Festival next week, please. It'll be a good time. And you'll learn a lot. You'll have a lot of fun. Bo Mueller, uh, Maurice, Ashley, Guy, and Ty, thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Have thank a you. great festival. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay.